Okay, good morning. My name is Amy Mustafarai. I'm a computer scientist. I work at Wellesley College in Massachusetts. Um, I'm here to present work that I did with my amazingly talented students, Emma Lurie over there. She's at Berkeley now and Claire Devine. Now, because we are in Europe here, I I uh, want to start by a shout out to some uh, very influential European scientists. So first, let's figure this out. Oh, right. Um, Nicholas Copernicus, the Polish astronomer who lived in the 15th, 16th century. And you might remember from middle school because um, he's the man that came up with this crazy revolutionary theory that it is the sun and not the earth that is at the center of our universe. However, he didn't publish his theory until uh, at the uh, end of his life, not only because he lived at the very scary time, but also because at that time, uh, observations that were possible with naked eye actually also provided evidence for the competing theory of geocentrism. And so it took many, many decades, and the genius of the Italian astronomer and physicist Galileo Galileo, who after learning about this new instrument from Holland, went and built his own telescopes and directed them towards the heavens and collected the observations that he needed in order to provide the evidence for validating Copernicus theory. Now, I want to say why I'm starting with these old stories. Well, because once Galileo is considered the father of the modern science and the scientific um, cycle or the scientific methods, and we still are talking about theories and experiments and observation. This is what um, d drives our work. But also because this story is of what is at the center of our attention. It's still a very important question where we focus our attention, what we centered on, and um, it can change the word, the way we see the word, and then what kind of knowledge we generate. So going back to the topic of auditing search engines, you might say, why political elections and not everything, and everything else? Well, um, political elections are this other thing besides science that actually can change the word and have impact. Also because our information systems are so important nowadays in making such decisions, and because of their importance, they have become target of, of politicians and conspiracy theories. And unfortunately, because they have to, well, there is lack of transparency about how these platforms work, and sometimes this is legitimate, then we have to deal with this idea that, oh, somehow they are biased. Um, so when we auditors go and audit search engines, we often start by centering our audits on the politicians. We start with the list of the candidate names, and we are looking at, oh, are the results of search engines fair to these candidates? While what we should be asking is that, or maybe in addition to that, is are the results fair to the voters who are going to make this decision? And so going back to this picture of the scientific method, as a computer scientist, I spend a lot of time actually building the instruments for performing the measurements in these uh, platforms and also designing the experiments that will allow us to make um, decisions and take into account variability and reduce it. So I get all these observations, but I'm not a social scientist or a humanist, and so often I have problems of interpreting them or, or, or finding the right framework. And so this time around, we said, well, what if we go and talk talk to social scientists about what kind of theories they use to model, especially voter decision making. Uh, so it turns out that there is this, uh, there are so many theories out there. We only picked one from Arthur Lupia, a political scientist, who actually posited that um, voters are, don't have encyclopedic knowledge about elections. They actually use information cues. So what are these information cues? Information cues are shortcuts to knowledge that you might need to make a decision. Suppose you know who has endorsed someone. That might be enough in order to decide to vote or not for the person, or just look at the polls or their political orientation. So um, in our paper, we collected various data sets to look into this. I will not go into the details of the data set for a data set for one of the questions about whether there is evidence for the information cues theory, we collected uh, query phrases from, from Amazon Turkers who were US voters, 
And then by coding, qualitatively coding the data, then we notice that actually they do formulate queries that are information queues, and one fourth of them do this very frequently. Um, in addition to that, in another data set that we, we had, which is about Google related searches for groups of candidates, we noticed that the group, uh, a group of candidates composed only of women was actually more often subjected through these information queues, things like polls and endorsements, which tells us a little bit about how we view women candidates, but also um, highlights this need for us to not look at uh, individual candidates, but maybe at two groups of candidates and audit for them. Um, so uh, once again, this question of why focusing on what voters are searching for. So we had collected these um, data set of thousands of query and my students painstakingly uh, qualitatively coded the data in order to find themes out there. And there were so many of them. Um, here are just some queries for you to look at. Black democratic candidates, voter suppression, immigration-based crime. Um, what they tell us is that sometimes these are contested queries. Um, and if you've heard about this concept of data voids from uh, Golubievsky and Boyd uh, at data, uh, data Society and uh, Microsoft Research, these are often, um, so data voids are a lack of uh, high quality results in search engines. And what happens often is that uh, malicious actors then come in and fill the space with misinformation and disinformation. And at this point, I wanted um, to ask this question to our community about the need for checking political information um, for fairness. So we have talked a lot here about how hiring or advertising are important because they affect individuals. And so if the platforms are interfering with their decisions, somehow we have to make sure that they're fair. But what about this information which we are uh, willingly uh, looking for, right, instead of being shown to us? and. Um, are we uh, holding the information platforms um, accountable for the quality of that information? Do we as a group deserve to have a high quality information instead? Um, therefore, um, I wanted to offer these two takeaways, and there are more in the paper, but one of them is about considering an ecosystem approach when we are doing auditing into the systems. It is not only about the algorithms themselves, but uh, about all the actors that participate in this uh, information ecosystem, the ones that produce the information, who disseminate it, and uh, also consume it, um, but also, an invitation as a computer scientist to all the social scientists in the room that we can talk a little bit more about uh, social science theories that help us model not only voters but user behavior in general and their information needs so that when we perform our audits, these can be informed and inspired by our research. Thank you.